I know that some of you are mining on your CPUs, but the question is, if you were to overclock your CPU, would you actually gain more hash rate? Today on that Tefo Guide, I'll be showing you how I'm going to be overclocking my CPU and if it is really worth overclocking to gain more hash rate. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's see if we can actually gain some hash rate by overclocking the CPU, but more importantly, is this really going to be worth it? So let's find out. On the screen here, you can see that I have speed fan, which is going to tell me the temperature of my CPU, which is currently running at 39 degrees Celsius. In the room I am in at the moment where my PC system is, the ambient temperature is currently around 28 degrees Celsius, and I do have an AC which I just switched on now, so that temperature will drop slightly as well. So make sure to keep your temperatures in check when you are overclocking your CPUs. Here I have the processor information. I am using an i7-5820K CPU. So K means that it is unlocked and that I can actually amend the clock timings from the BIOS. It is a Haswell E CPU. This is quite an old CPU. It came out around 2011, 2012. It is socket 2011 and it's currently all at idle. It's got six cores and 12 threads. So basically I can use all of the 12 threads when I want to mine. As I've said in previous videos, do not use all of the threads because it will not gain you more hash rate. Actually, if you are also mining on your GPUs at the same time, it will actually make things worse. So at idle and the CPU is not doing anything, I am burning an average of around 150 watts as you can see on this side here. Sometimes it fluctuates just a little bit because obviously the processing power is always varying and I am screen capturing at the moment as well. So that might also slightly affect the hash rate. Everything at idle, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to launch the unminable app as administrator, as always. Okay, now that the unminable app is up, I'm gonna put that down there. And I'm going to click on continue. I'm gonna mine on my CPU, my minor file location is updated and I'm gonna click on next. And I'm gonna go for Shiba Inu at the moment. I'm gonna mine Shiba Inu, it won't make a difference. The hash rate will be the same on all of the coins that you decide to select here because you are still going to be mining on the random x algorithm anyway so i'm going to click on start and here just notice before i actually click on start that the core speed is at 3.3 and it drops down when there isn't any load to 1.2 gigahertz okay so at idle it is 3.3 when there is some load at the default settings and then it will kind of turbo boost a little bit more than that as well. I'm going to start the miner and wait for the hash rate to appear. Just quickly, I'm going to show you my settings while this is starting up. And here you can see that I'm on high. I'm not using any custom settings and I've got a referral code in there as well. I'm just going to close this and I'm going to start mining. The core speed has now propped up to 3.4. So I've gotten a slight boost on it. I'm currently getting around 2500. I'm going to give that some time to settle. The temperature for the CPU has gone from 39 to 42 degrees. Notice also the energy consumption which is now up to 225 from the idle 150 watts. So essentially while I'm mining at full load I am using 75 watts extra at the moment at the stock speeds of this CPU. I'm going to fast forward through this bit for five minutes and I'll be right back. Moments later. Okay, so it's been around five minutes and everything has settled now. So the temperature is at 45 degrees on the CPU and this is at default stock clocks. As you can see, the CPU utilization isn't going above 70%. So it's hovering around the 60, 65% mark. And that's what I actually want. Everything is default. So I'm not using all of the threads all at once. These are the threads here, as you can see, the 12 little dots, and some of them aren't being utilized like the others, and they always alternate. So sometimes this box will be white and the others will be full. 
So I've got around four of those threads that are not being utilized. Like I said earlier, I would suggest not using 100% of your CPU usage and not using the thread count to the maximum that you have because it will not gain you more hash rate. So here we have a hash rate of 2,500. Normally, even at stock, I would get this up to 3,000 hash, but I am screen capturing, so that will affect a bit as well. The calculated hash rate is close as well to two, at 2,400. At one point here, I was actually higher than my actual current hash rate. So the calculated was higher than the current, and now it's pretty much evened out and they're both around the same. So now it's time to actually do some overclocking. I am going to go straight to my stable overclocking settings, but I'll show you how I did overclock it in the BIOS right now as well. Okay, so here I'm in the BIOS, and for reference, I am using an X99 Pro mainboard. I'm gonna to switch to advanced mode, and I'm going to show you my default settings at the moment from AI Tweaker and everything at the moment is on auto. The maximum target CPU turbo frequency is 3.6 gigahertz, but during mining, I got around 3.4 gigahertz because I wasn't using all of the threads. Target DRAM is 2133, target cache frequency 3 gig and the DMI peg frequency is 100 megahertz. Now these are all the default settings, so everything is at auto. The manual mode is disabled, core voltage is auto, everything is just set to standard. I'm going to now load my overclocking profile and I'm going to load my profile number 1 which is overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz. And if we go back to the settings now, you can see the changes that I had made. So instead of everything being auto now, I have changed this to the XMB profile. The CPU strap I would recommend not touching and just leave that at 100 megahertz. BCLK frequency I would also leave at 100 megahertz because if you touch this it will also overclock your memory so just leave those at default which is normally 100 megahertz. I'm going to sync all of my cores so whatever I'm giving on my first core I'm going to get on all the other five cores as well so I've got a total of six cores. I've done this at a multiplier of 43 meaning that the BC LK frequency of 100 megahertz times 43 will equal 4300 megahertz, 4.3 gigahertz. Here I have also changed the mode to adaptive mode so that the core voltage will adapt depending on the load and as additional turbo mode CPU core voltage I have set this to a fixed value of 1.29 volts because for me that is what was most stable but it might be different for you so make sure that you see what CPU you have do a bit of research and these will obviously vary depending on what CPU you have as well and what mainboard you have this is all auto here and nothing else was touched so now I'm going to go back into Windows and we'll see what hash rate we will achieve. 12 seconds later. I made a few notes here before overclock at stock at 3.3 gigahertz to 3.4 gigahertz. We had 2,580 hashes. That was during screen capture. The idle temperature was 39 degrees and it went up to 45 degrees when mining. And I had 150 watts at idle and it went up to 225 watts while mining, so that was a 75 watts increase, which equates to 1.8 units per day, which then translates to 23 cents for more per day, according to my electricity, which is around 13 euro cents per unit. Now I've made some notes here for the after overclock, at the moment it's overclocked, so it is hitting 4.3 sometimes and it's still at idle, I'm not doing anything, so it's ranging from the 1.2 to the 4.3. Temperature is currently actually lower, but I'm not going to take that into account because the AC that I have behind me has been running for a few more minutes, so the room has 
cooled down less than 28 degrees and it's down to around 24 degrees so i am going to take this that at idle temperature the temperature is around the same and i have tried this without any cooling in the room whatsoever and it is around the same at idle i'm going to say it's 39 degrees and we'll add the temperature while mining as well what i'm going to do again is i'm going to launch the unminable app exactly the same as before run as administrator we'll see what will happen with the electric consumption here as well when i start mining so i'm going to continue cpu minor file location is fine next and i'm going to do the same thing exactly like before so i'm going to start mining Give it some time to settle let that temperature start rising at 37 already from 36 it was so let's see how higher the temperature will go than the 45 mark that we had earlier although the room is still cooler it's already at 39 it's starting to mine so from our previous 2580 hashes during screen capture i'm now getting 2700 during screen capture as well I'm just going to let that settle like before. I'm going to give it five minutes and I'll be right back. More moments later. Currently we're doing around 2,800 hashes. The calculated hash rate is close to it as well at around 2,764. So they're very close together. The core speed is 4,300 megahertz at 4.3 gigahertz, still stable. The temperature has gone to 50 degrees Celsius so it has risen quite a bit as well and the power consumption is hitting around 275 to 280 watts so i've made a few notes here already to compare before and after so the after overclock with screen capture as well this went up to 50 degrees celsius when mining and i am using my ac to cool the room at idle it was at 160 watts versus the 150 watts and while mining it is now 275 to 280 watts versus the 225 watts at stock so there's a 115 watt increase versus the 75 watt increase and that will equate to 2.76 units more consumption per day of electricity which will equate to around 36 cents in my case at 13 cents per unit per day so here i'm going to put in the hash rate that we have which is around 2810 hash and this is obviously also during screen capture 2810 hashes if we do that versus the 580 hashes what are we actually making so to answer that question we're going to go to the unminable site and i'm going to select the random x algorithm i am on shiba coin at the moment because that's what i was mining so 2,580 hashes will equate to 16,771 Shiba coins per day. So I'm going to take out the calculator here. 16,771 Shibas on average per day times the current price of Shiba is currently at this price in Euro. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it here. That means I will be making 9 cents, almost 10 euro cents per day before electricity costs mining at stock. So mining at stock, if I'm turning on the system just for mining, that's one thing. If the system is on anyway and you're mining, then that's the 75 watt increase. Otherwise, you would need to take the entire consumption, which is 225 watts, if you were not going to switch on the system. I'm going to take it that the PC is on anyway. I'm just going to mine on it at 75 watts. So that is 23 cents for. So I'm actually making a loss here, even at stock levels. Now that's okay to a certain degree, because if you want to invest in the coin, if you believe in the coin, then this way you're investing with a few cents from your electricity instead of purchasing the Shiba coin or any other coin straight away. But the question now is, what is the difference between the overclock that we did, which isn't much, it's 4.3 gigahertz, it's one gigahertz more, but that is my stable overclock. If I went to 4.4 gigahertz, I would start getting random blue screens. So this was the most stable overclock 
for the least power consumption that I could actually tune in. So the one gigahertz overclock gave me around 2810-2580. It gave me 230 hashes more. What are 230 hashes more? See, it actually dropped a bit more now. This is obviously going to vary throughout the day depending on how many miners there are as well. So that 230 hashes more in unminable, if I were to say 230 hashes, I would gain 1,500 Shibas a day. So let's say 1,500. At that price of Shiba coin, so if we go back to the calculator, so I'm going to say 1,500, the difference between the stock and the overclock, that's my gain, times that price that we saw earlier. That's not even going to give me one cent more. So is it worth overclocking? In my opinion, no, it is not worth overclocking. At least on my CPU, it didn't make a difference because you were losing out anyway when you were mining it at stock. So this is just having fun mining the coins and investing in the coins because you actually believe in the coins. A more effective way of mining and a more efficient way of mining would be using GPUs, of course, because you would literally ramp that hash rate up much more and it'll actually be mega hash and not hash. Hash is the computation method used when you are mining on CPU on the random X algorithm and mega hash is for all the others like ET hash, ETC hash, CalPal, etc. Now, if you were to mine Ethereum here, the gains are still not going to be significant and they're going to be pretty much the same as Shiba coin as well. So the whole gist of this is that when you're overclocking on your CPU, what you're getting here is a higher temperature. So I'm at 4.3 gigahertz all the time. I am not using all of my threads. If I use all of my threads, I would have issues and it will actually start bottlenecking the operating system. It depends if you're going to use it or not and you're not going to gain more hash rate. I don't want to do it now because I'm afraid that it will start bottlenecking my screen capture and it will start lagging. I have tried this and if you push this to 100% and if you go to the custom tab and here you try and do hash hash threads and in my case I have 12 threads and I use the entire 12 threads, it's literally not going to make a difference. Even if I try to use nine threads, 10 threads, it's still going to be the same hash rate. So that's not going to make a difference. The difference comes in when you actually have more threads on the CPU. So if you have, for example, a 10 core processor, you'd probably have 20 threads. There it's going to make a difference because you can split the load more on different threads, but it isn't going to make a difference if you increase how many threads you're going to use on the same package on the same CPU. On a 10 core CPU, you have more cores. What also makes a difference is the level two and level three cache. Those will make a difference to increase your hash rate significantly as well. So in a nutshell, guys, now you know that it is not really worth overclocking your CPU. It's just going to bring the temperature up more. Here it's now at 51 degrees versus the 45 I had before, and it's an air-conditioned room. And you're also bringing up your power consumption as well. As you saw earlier, my power consumption over here is 275 watts versus the 225 watts that I heard earlier mining at stock levels, which is still also very high as well. I do recommend that if you are mining on your GPUs, you can mine on your CPUs. Just make sure not to use all of your threads because of the bottlenecking issues and it may hurt your GPU hash rate as well. Guys, I don't want to drag this video out any longer. I know it's been quite a long video, but I hope that I could have helped you out here so that you don't waste time overclocking. If you do manage to overclock and get significant hash rate jumps, please do let me know and let the whole community know so that we can all learn and share together and let us know what you did in order to achieve those gains. If you have not subscribed to my channel, then please do so down below. Hit the big red button, it's free, and you'll be notified when new videos come out on my channel. Hit the like, and until next time, take very good care of yourselves, and thanks for watching.